Finnovate showcases cutting-edge banking and financial technology through a global conference series featuring short-form demos and thought leadership. Now, the conversation continues on the Finnovate podcast. Welcome, everybody, to this episode of the Finnovate Podcast. Joining me today, we have Vincent Bessemer, SVP Americas at Backbase. Vincent, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Greg. So what we're going to talk about today is this predatory lending idea, obviously a huge problem in finance in general and in fintech. Before we get there, though, Vincent, could you take just a little bit of time to introduce yourself, talk about how you came to join Backbase? Yeah, Absolutely. I've uh, been with Backbase for about six years now, um, and pretty much my whole career, I've been really interested in customer experiences, digital in general, um, had throughout my uh, career the pleasure of working with financial institutions, ranging from the largest banks in the world, like Wells Fargo, American Express, um, AIG, uh, Insurance Group. Um, and, and when I joined Backbase, it, it was an opportunity to bring a new product to America with a new philosophy. Um, and, uh, and we actually see that that philosophy is now adopted by you know, institutions like Goldman Sachs and Key Bank and Royal Bank of Canada and you name them, uh, but also by smaller institutions like, uh, like uh, Wildfire Credit Union and 800 million assets on the management credit union. So really giving the smaller institutions the power and the ability to compete like a national bank was what, uh, what drew me to Backbase. And um, I have worked with, uh, with institutions directly as, uh, as commercially being responsible. And, uh, and now I have the, the responsibility and the, and the privilege to, to heading up our operations in, uh, in the Americas. It's uh, amazing to watch how Backbase has grown. You know, we first saw them, I first saw them, I should say, back at Finnovate in 2010. And watching the evolution has been quite amazing. For anybody who's interested in really learning more about what they do, I would encourage you to check out some of their demo videos from previous Finnovate events because um, it really is quite impressive. A couple of Best of Show winning demos in there and recently a finalist in the customer experience category at the Finnovate Awards. But um, what we want to talk about today is this kind of big problem of predatory lending. And I know this is something which you, know, you kind of uh, hit from two sides. It's sort of the professional side and the personal side. But what is it about uh, this subject matter that you find really interesting and that, that kind of drives your passion in that area? Yeah, thanks for asking uh, about that. I, I, I really feel that we can make an impact to people's lives and, and, and really help them achieve their financial needs and, 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 and realize their dreams. And, and quite frankly, if you push somebody in the predatory lending system, you're, you're, you're kind of stripping them away from wealth and, and from the ability to build up um, that, uh, that that wealth uh, wealth, but also you know uh, stability and 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 resilience, if you will. And uh, you know personally, I grew up in an environment where both my parents were handicapped. They never really got the fair economic shake, if you will. Um, so we were living paycheck by paycheck. And uh, you know if 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 one thing happens, um, yeah, you're forced into the predatory lending system. And if one thing you know that you have to pay back, like a a, a washer a washing machine that uh, that breaks down or something like that, yeah, you you can dig yourself out of that. But if if you see that the people are in like a second or a third calamity, that, that's really where it starts to become really tricky and really hard um, to dig yourself out of that, uh, that hole. And, and do realize that there are institutions out there, predatory lenders, that, that charge as much as 750% APR. Right? And, and, and that's obviously where we feel that we have a responsibility from an innovation perspective. Uh, the Backbase platform is, is, is built to innovate, um, that we can actually help financial institutions with that innovation and, and, and help financial institutions at the end of the day to take their responsibility um, and, uh, and, and help consumers not uh, stepping into this predatory lending trap. And it's so easy to see how it can happen, especially in a situation right now where so many people in America and elsewhere really have very little in savings, very little safety net. And you know, one piece of bad luck, as you say, maybe you can recover from that, but two or three pieces of bad luck and all of a sudden you're in this downward spiral and it's impossible to dig yourself back out of it. And all of a sudden all your wealth is gone, your future credit is gone, and, and, and it can really be you know, really long lasting 
penalties for for something which is you know so easy to fall into. Now, one of the things that I think is really interesting here, because we've seen people using technology in the fintech space to to really help people you know lend in a responsible way, to engage in you know, looking at what customers really need. Um, we've also seen people using technology to make it even easier to fall into this web down you know to go down this spiral with micro loans at crazy interest rates available at the push of a button you know and so in the period of five minutes you can open a loan and all of a sudden you're caught in this web now i think this is one of the really difficult things about fintech as an industry that it kind of enables both sides what are your thoughts on how fintech has shaped the lending industry you know both on the good and bad side yeah i think fintech has showed us like how can you effectively take data and 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 blend that into an experience a human-centered design if you will uh, that is uh, able to compete on convenience uh, we saw that in the in the high profit products like mortgages and uh, and 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 credit cards and and student uh, ref, uh, student loans refinancing and 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 that's really where uh, the, those fintechs have kind of paved the way to actually kind of show us what the recipes uh, um, are. But obviously, that same technology can also be used by the predatory lenders to yeah, kind of compete on convenience, if you will. Like, how can you, to your point, uh, Greg, very quickly um, engage in a loan? It was m- most of the time, a matter of minutes. Um, what is the proximity of these uh, type of stores, if you will, uh, to where you are? And I think uh, that is what the predatory lending system is uh, is kind of uh, betting on. And what they're also betting on really is that there is a group of people that are uh, systematically either underbanked or maybe just intimidated or even scared to go to banks, right? I, I think, you know, there is not a CIO or, or a chief dis- experience officer of a community bank or a credit union that I talk to that feels that they are providing value to their communities. But sometimes it's harder for bankers to realize um, that uh, people can just sometimes be intimidated to go into the branch. And just imagine like 50 years ago, you know, you, 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 you to put on your best uh, Sunday clothes uh, for your appointment with your banker to convince them to, uh, to, to give you a loan to, to either bridge a bad year on the farm or maybe you have to farm grow or, or get a house. And, and, and for a lot of people, it's still that daunting um, to actually ask for help uh, of their local financial institutions. And, and, and again, the proximity and the convenience that these predatory lenders are offering is sometimes too, uh, too good to pass up. Absolutely, it is. I mean, it's fun to think about in the olden days when you would have to go dress up and go to a bank. Obviously, you know, that's not how most people do it. But there is still this feeling of kind of being judged as a person. When you go to engage in the credit process, there is a, a system that is kind of running the ruler over you saying, are you worthy of this? And that is a daunting, uh, daunting system. And it does inhibit people from coming and getting help and getting the products that they need. Um, you know, I think the other piece that's really worth highlighting here, you know, the majority of lenders in this space are responsible. The majority of bankers who you come into contact with at a conference like Finnovate care deeply about their customers' financial health. And um, obviously, you know, there are bad actors, but the, the majority of the industry is, is, I think, doing it at least in operating in good faith. But if you're a responsible lender... How do you communicate that? How do you kind of break through the noise that's out there? Because one of the things that these convenience plays are really good at is marketing themselves and getting themselves kind of top of mind, whether that's you, know, you see a billboard in the right moment or you know, sports sponsorships or things like this. How do you as a responsible lender kind of break through this noise so that people who do engage with you have that confidence? Yeah. yeah, Greg, I, I definitely want to echo what you're saying there, right? I, I, I have not come across a banker that doesn't want to be there for their community, right? Um, so everybody has this intent and 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 uh, and, and there's a quite a big percentage that succeed in uh, being the, uh, the responsible lender in their community. I, I, I think first and foremost, it starts by just being very clear and transparent on why these short term, small dollar uh, lending programs uh, exist at your bank, right? To really create that bridge credit that is intended for a couple of days or even maybe a couple of weeks and and just be clear and and, and upfront about that. Also towards your uh, shareholders, your board, that this is maybe not the product with the highest margin or with the most uh, effective cost base, uh, but it is something that uh, from a responsibility-wise you want to push in your market. Because uh, remember, if a 
consumer is not pushed into that vicious debt cycle with a predatory lender, that customer may be able to build up more wealth and eventually become a profitable member or a, a customer to your institution. Right? So in that sense, it's also taking your responsibility uh, in, in your community, but also cultivating tomorrow's customers. Right? At the end of the day, I, I think if, if I were in the, on the side of the bank and really had to contemplate uh, if and how to do this, I would first and foremost start with the experience, really start outside in. Like, what do my customers need from a credit perspective? The, y- you cannot even assume that, uh, for instance, the cre- and credit card or a, a small uh, uh, dollar lo- loan are the right products for that person, right? So, so I would say from an experience perspective, ask while you engage for the key uh, data points that you need, the amount of dollars, uh, the, the, uh, how long that loan needs to last, uh, maybe uh, based on some KYC that you're able to do uh, to really in a generic type of experience, then branch off to the products that you would be suggesting for that person. Because for some pers- uh, people, it could actually be that a credit card is the right solution. Uh, for other people, it might be a personal loan. And, and for the people that really need to, it could be um, a, uh, a short-term, uh, low-dollar uh, loan. So, so I would say almost like a wizard style of dialogue that gets people to the right uh, product and and there in that uh, sequence you can also build in your own risk appetite uh, and that could maybe change one month to the other um, so so thinking in the terms of like a platform that can power you there and allow you to set those uh, those uh, parameters uh, is going to be crucial in, in really bringing this to market well you know you're talking to someone from backbase when they mention customer experience at every question so you didn't disappoint there vincent i appreciate that um, but you know, it is true that this is i think one of the things that backbase has, has done really well is provide this platform with this kind of customer centric view um, this idea that uh, you know the customer comes first and getting a platform that helps them discover what they really need is is crucial and for a bank that is operating in good faith, that it really does care about their customers, giving them the means of you know, having self-service when they want to, where they can go in and find a product and, and get it very quickly, but also providing means of kind of steering towards the right product, this kind of um, you know, guide, not sell mentality, I think is, is one that um, you, know, you see a lot of. And, and you know, it's, it's great to see what you guys at Backbase have been able to do in terms of making it easier for people to get the help that they need. Because at the end of the day, if you're a financial institution and your customers aren't finding what they need on your own website through your channels, that's where they start to look at other options. And that's where they potentially you know, you become a risk of going and engaging with the wrong type of lender and getting the wrong type of product. So it's very yeah, much very something open. that uh, you know, banks need to be doing. You, know, you mentioned kind of taking responsibility for looking after your customers in this way. And, and obviously, you know, Backbase is there to help. Yeah, abs- absolutely. I, I think at the end of the day, if you analyze why there is an inability for a financial institution to truly innovate or to have a faster pace of innovation. It typically uh, is because they're not in control over the digital strategy. And that leads to situations where if you want to do something, you have to wait on uh, your vendor's roadmap or you have to um, pay uh, large sums of money uh, or um, you know any type of uh, almost like a can-do type of attitude, right? And, and, and at Backbase, we really say, you know, if you think on one side, like how do you build a true engagement, right, with your customer base, but also with your employees, right? Because they need to work hand in hand to get certain processes done, right? And then having a platform notion that allows you, if you're a smaller institution, it really allows you to compete like a national bank. And if you're a larger institution, that you can really say, okay, I have this industrialized platform, this set of non-functionals that allow me to get faster to market with whatever I want to create, now you can start innovating on your own. And now you uh, now you are working from a customer-first perspective, a can-do mentality, uh, and really optimize uh, your digital uh, digital footprints. And 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 obviously with that, um, yeah, you can differentiate and uh, by by innovation and and for instance, engage in some of these uh, things like uh, like uh, a fighting predatory lending in your community because you do need technology for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, well, that, that about does it for our time today. Um, again, if, if you haven't already, I would encourage you to go check out some of the Backbase demo videos from previous events. You can find them all at finnovate.com. 
Um, Vincent, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Uh, good work so far. And, and thank you for highlighting this issue for us. It's something that will likely continue to be around for quite a while, but there are ways that we can combat it through the use of good technology, through the use of prioritizing customer needs, and obviously creating a platform that enables banks to really be successful at the work that the majority of them really want to do, which is obviously help people out. So um, thanks very much for spending your time with me today. Yeah, absolutely. And, and even if you're listening to this, even if you don't have a project per se, but you just want to be a little bit more informed, uh, we always love to talk. Excellent. The Finnovate podcast is produced by Informa Connect in association with Provoke.fm Media. Check out Finnovate.com for information on Finnovate's upcoming shows and to learn how you can get involved. The discount code Finnovate Podcast will save you 20% on tickets to all of our events. And you can email us at info at for information on sponsoring, speaking, or demoing. Thanks for listening.